All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we got a special, special, special guest, Mr. Clive Dixon. Welcome to the show. How are you, man? I'm good. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Where are you living right now? I don't know too much about you, bro. So we're gonna we're gonna dig in and see what's going on with all. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a little deep dive today. I live in Long Beach. I've been living there for almost three years now. The campus. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. Dude, so See, pro skateboarders there. fucking just going to the liquor store. It's yeah. very saturated with skate. When you moved down there for the first time, was there anybody that you're just like, dude, that fucking guy is just fucking just pumping, pumping his gas them? over there. <laughs> I don't know if it was a specific person, okay. but it was just a, like seeing everybody all the time. All the time. Nonstop. It was pretty wild. It's pretty cool because LA's massive. There'll be dudes that live four blocks away that I won't see for three years. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking insane. Yeah. But down there, it's like a whole skate community. Mm-hmm. Do you go to Cherry Park a bunch? I went there today. Oh, yeah, there dude. you go. Okay. It's like a TF. Yeah, that place what is sick. the hell do you skate there, bro? There's no <laughs> hubbas. There's no... Ra- what is it? The big gap. Yeah, ground. what's going on, man? Flat ground, flat okay. bar. Okay. But you're from Florida. Mm-hmm. Right, but also too, you have dual citizenship, right? Yep. UK. Mm-hmm. What's going on there, man? My dad was from Newcastle, okay. and uh, when I was born, he got my citizenship, and uh, he just got it all squared away oh. because he thought it might uh, be able to help me later in life. You, it's useful, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, your whole life, dual citizenship. Yeah, and we used to travel to like the UK all the time and through Europe and. I remember as a kid, like him teaching me, like we'd leave on our U.S. passport and show up with the British passport and then minute, vice versa coming back. Oh, because whoa. you got to get a stamp, no? I mean, if you're traveling for, I don't know how that dual thing works. Um, I don't even think they stamp the passport when you leave like that. Really? Because they just check oh, yeah. it in the U.S. when you leave. And then when you show up in the U.K., you show them the British passport. And you go through like the short line and yeah. it's super easy. And so then, you have like no stamps. I know. <laughs> well, like, no, but if you go to Spain or something, yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah, need yeah, a stamp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the UK, that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Do you huh. usually just use your US if you go anywhere else? Yeah. Is there a certain place that you would only well, use? Well, you could use the UK passport for anywhere. It's still in the EU. So you grew up in Florida though. Mm-hmm. Wait, which part? Like central Florida, Cocoa Beach. Coco Beach. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I wonder how that got its name. I wonder if you... <laughs> <laughs> they were trading goods. Yeah. So we were talking about before the show, you start, You said you started skating around like nine or something, nine, ten years old? Yeah, it must have been nine or ten. And uh, I went over to my buddy's house and he had a skateboard and that was the end of it. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, get a board or were you borrowing his? Did you steal his maybe? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of dudes steal their first yeah. board. Yeah. No, I would like tell my mom like, oh, I want to go over to Johnny's house. Like I want to go skate with them. Okay. And then they eventually got me the skateboard and mm. I was into it for like two years. And then I kind of like drifted away. I would still like skate around, skate to school and stuff, but I like stopped going to the skate park for a little while. Mm. And just like went fishing and stuff. <laughs> <You> went fishing <laughs> for like, two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What board did you get? What was your first board? My first board was like a blank board from like a sports shop. And then when I got like my real board from a skate shop, it was Black Label. Black Label? Oh. oh. Mm. Chubb? I don't know. I don't mm. think it was a pro model. I think it was just team edition. Team, team oh. board? Yeah. Blank board, though. Your first board. Shop board, probably. No, I think it was like Sports Authority. Like, oh, just oh like, seriously? One of those? Mm-hmm. Like shit trucks? Like yeah. all that stuff? Shit generic trucks. trucks. <laughs> generic yeah. wheels. Isn't that the brand of uh, sport the, the an, Sports Authority? They make them, company. actually? Yeah, shit trucks. Wow. <laughs> Blank <Jeez>. board, <laughs> shit trucks. <laughs> Poo-poo wheels. <laughs> I think you just start two new companies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> The mall stores, whatever. Mm-hmm. Big box stores. P- yeah. Played against sports, they would always have cheap boards for like 25 bucks. Yeah, because Andrew and those guys would be fucking getting another other, other oh, yeah. boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reynolds. Yeah. 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 Have brother Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> so when you got back from fishing after your two year hiatus, mm-hmm. around what? 12 years old 12 or 13 yeah. got back into it. Yeah. Did you, um, is that when you fully got yeah. sparked? Mm hmm. What, like, what was your first video? I don't know. I would go to the local skate shop and just watch what was on the TV there. Mm-hmm. But um, I would buy... I only had a few VHSs before it went to DVD, but I definitely had some 4 on ones Okay. Nice. And then, I don't know, I would just go to a friend's house. I remember 
a really big video was the bag of sock like when i was like super in skating yeah yes. that was one of my favorite videos and then of course like fully flared came out and we all like had like a group like video premiere at my friends house. Viewing right. party, yeah. yeah. I think everyone did that. I feel like everyone had to get together and watch it with their yeah. friends, or even if you if you weren't at their premiere, you know. And then what did, uh, did you get a, a shop sponsor or something for your first? Yeah, this I, is all still in Florida. You just moved out here recently, right? Uh, I moved to San Diego in like 2012. Okay. And lived there for a year, and then uh, I lived in an RV with my buddy Clint for a year, and we traveled around the states. Clint Walker. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, and we did that, and then I lived back in Florida for a year, and then moved back out. To- when you're living in an RV with somebody, is it? How do you know where to go? Or like, do you have arguments <laughs> of like, no, I want to go. Let's go here. I want to park the RV here. This doesn't look safe. Maybe this Walmart parking lot doesn't. I mean, what? Who emptied the shit? Yeah, it's a whole thing. It seems like. Um, uh, well, we really utilized utilized uh, social media, and uh, we like met tons of people and like stayed at their houses and stuff. Oh, okay. and, oh wow! Uh, we would do a month in each city we went to, and we started in Chicago. Oh, wow! And I turned, I think I turned twenty the first month of the RV tour. Okay. And then um, from then we uh, we headed down south and did a few stops. Ended up in Florida, and then worked our way west. And the last stop of the tour, I turned 21. 21? So we did it for a full a year. year. Yeah. Were you just touring, you guys, just to the gnarliest spots you could find? <laughs> or people were taking you there? Um, yeah, no, like doing a month in each city, like you would really get acclimated to the city and mm-hmm. you'd really like meet the kids and the crew and hang out. And like we made tons of friends oh. and like we'd like actually like get to know the spots and maybe skate them a few times whether, rather than like... A normal trip where you're like right yeah, there, like skating yeah. now, hidden. And know. were you filming stuff? Like, would you just like maybe hook up with a local filmer? Yeah, obviously you didn't have a filmer. No, or just... we had a dude with us who filmed. Oh, you did. And um, a photographer, Trevor Vaughn. I don't Ooh. know if you guys heard of him. He came on pretty much the whole tour Sick. and filmed. And then um, Adam Mills came to a few stops, mm-hmm. and uh, Trevor Owens filmed for okay. a majority of it. Are you in Birdhouse at this point? Yes. Yeah. What year did you get on Birdhouse? Uh, I think it was 2012, the end of 2011, 2012. Was that your first sponsor? No, I skated for Fibro, or I got boards from them. And oh, you did? Oh, wow. And stuff and do that, yeah. Oh. That was uh, quite the experience. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so I mean, guys, puts these guys to work. Uh, they do. You guys do a lot of demos, like grassroots shit. I was didn't, didn't really do any demos with huh? them, but um, they definitely, like bring you up in like the brotherhood aspect of like the five borough family York like shit, yeah and i would go out to new york and skate with them and uh the team manager at the time his name was tombo and he brought me out to new york a few times and like one of the missions i was on it was just like starting to snow like getting cold and they were trying to finish the video and like he knew like that I could skate like bigger stuff and like he'd be like, All right, like bring me to his gnarliest spots and it was so cold outside he would just sit in the van <laughs> and he'd be like, Yo, go like check out the spot <laughs> <laughs> And I'd go like look at it and I'd be like, Yo, I think I could do this and that and he'd be like, All right, start warming up and then when I got close to the trick, he'd come out. Pop and out of the Oh wow. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. And this is a kid from Florida. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. How did you end up getting bored from Fibro if you lived in Florida? My good friend, Adam Ziegler, I met him through his brother-in-law, who I was filming with at the time, and Adam was repping Fibro in Florida, and we were skating together, and he decided to try to get me boards, and okay. I met like Tombo and Steve Rodriguez, and we became friends and it worked out. So you never got on the team? It was just kind of a no, flow, never fully on the flow team. program? But, I mean, I skated with them a lot, and that was definitely, like, what I was going for. Okay. Well, how did the birdhouse even come into the picture? Were you getting, spot? were you doing Sponsor Me videos at this point? Or, I mean, obviously you're filming for a lot of, with Fibro and everything. Yeah, I don't think I ever sent a Sponsor Me video to anybody. Oh. Just gnarly in person all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I don't know about that, but. Uh, <laughs> you got to watch this kid, man. He's going to pull up in an RV and jump, <laughs> jump out. Clint and I have a good mutual friend. His name's Jeff Garza. Okay. Um, and I met him through a strange 
circumstance and then he like ended up like he was like in skating and like knew all these dudes who skated for birdhouse and showed them my footage and then they were hit me up asking me to like come on a trip with them and at first i told him no i was like no like i'm down with the fibro dudes like those are like my people okay and then uh i think like jerome was a team manager at the time and he was like pretty persistent and he was like do i need tony hawk to give you a call like <laughs> what are you gonna do like, right he's like are you gonna move to new york and get a job or like you want to come on this tour with us and i was like fuck it i guess yeah. i'm going on the tour <laughs> call the tony hawk card. yeah you should have yeah. said yeah you tell tony to call me up let's do this yeah did tony ever call you no oh, <laughs> has he ever called you probably okay okay maybe just making sure man was there it was fibro your first like flow like sponsor you've ever had yeah mm. but a mm -hmm. shop before or anything yeah i skated for like a couple a couple uh local shops and they would come and go where we were there wasn't the strongest skate community yeah in coco beach mm -hmm. is that what it is yeah well where is coco beach like in respect to like you know Miami or so like you know Tampa, Tampa obviously yeah. it's directly across on the other coast on the east coast uh, other coast mm -hmm. so how long does By it take Cape Canaveral yep yeah, right below Cape Canaveral oh how long does it take to drive from coast to coast two and a half hours not bad and okay. then uh, yeah Cocoa Beach that area is like I think it's technically a barrier island it's all connected it's that little like piece of land that comes off the side of Florida oh, it's connected oh, by bridges and whatnot okay what was the skate shop that you go did you say or no the first shop was like eastwood skate shop they were connected skate. to the skate park okay and then uh my buddy tyson started a shop called trademark mm -hmm. did that and then uh i skated for a shop named Vieira for a little while as mm. well so you're bouncing around shops man was like there... i said they were coming and going and right making the most of it so when you get on birdhouse you go on this tour right mm -hmm. is tony on the tour oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> That was pretty wild. Wait, was it? Mm -hmm. It was the first time you met Tony. Mm -hmm. Were you nervous at all? For sure. I mean, I think <laughs> sometimes I might still be nervous. <laughs> time, honestly. Are they filming for something at this point? Or is it just like a tour with demos and stuff like that? Yeah, it was a big demo tour. And okay. we were boom boom all huck the jams? Not no, quite no, no. that gnarly. Okay. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but there, I mean, every stop was like tons of kids and all that. And, um... But they pretty much told me, they were like, yeah, we'll put you on the team, like, shoot an ad, do this. So the whole wow. time, like, in between demos, I was, like, trying to film. Oh, and, shit. Like, film for, like, a welcome to the team deal. Damn. How long did that take? We probably filmed it in, like, four or five months. Four or five months? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the team. Maybe less. Birdhouse. What year was this? 2012. Uh, I think I went on the tour. It was the summer of 2011. And then... Uh, Got on the team, yeah, like the beginning of 2012. I mean, so, but, but I mean, legitimately, Birdhouse was your first, like, legitimate sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like, it was almost a revamp of Birdhouse, I want to say. It was like a whole new, younger squad at that point, right? Yeah, Jerome Case, he definitely came, or I don't know how long he was working as a team manager before I got on, but he definitely, like, built the team that it is today. Like Clint, mm -hmm. uh, David Loy, Aaron. Oh yeah, oh, Jaws. Mm -hmm. You guys have, dude. I watched your video. <laughs> Holy f shit! Which bro. one? The well, we, we did we did the reaction video. We did the reaction yeah, on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what was going on. What? Do you, how do you guys find these insane spots? Especially you. <laughs> After every video part I watched, I was like, How did he find that? There's just like this huge hubba in this like water ditch or something. <laughs> I'm like, the fucking guy. What? <laughs> that was all one of the most on fun it. sessions yeah. of it, dude, my life. It looked fun because you got Jaws trying to fucking kick. You got uh. Um, Shane over there mm -hmm. trying to fucking Sean Sean oh I'm sorry what did I say Shane Shane, Shane Hale and Sean Hill uh, it's too close <laughs> you got Sean trying to fucking five zero the thing I mean it yeah I've been on multiple sessions with Aaron where like I feel like either one of us is gonna like start it off and that was definitely one of them where like we were up at the top and we're like, all right, who's going first? Like, we almost like rock, paper, scissors. Like, who's going to jump down this motherfucker first? Wow. It was funny because I think in one clip too, I think it was when you skated El Toro and there was like, everybody was kind of celebrating and Jaws comes up and gives you a hug and he's got these massive gloves on. And I'm like, what the fuck was Jaws trying? Those are his like hammer fucking gloves. his hammer gloves. <laughs> my like, God damn. At least he wasn't naked. This is true. This is true. Were you there for his naked uh, attempts over there? Yeah, I towed him in. Did you tow him? You towed him in. Uh, I was holding him by the hand and slingshotted him in. Wow. When he was naked. Yeah. 
uncomfortable or was it just normal? Yeah, it's yeah. just Aaron. Okay. I've seen him naked like a thousand fucking times. Oh, he's, he just, he gets, he's one of those guys, just gets naked. No, not, he's not like a weird dude about that, but like, I mean, we've always obviously been on like King of the Road a few times sure. and just like, oh, yeah. that was more of a stunt to make us laugh. He had been trying to do a trick down the stairs and he tried it 25 times oh my gosh and we went we drove down there for him to do that and i mean that's not really a mission but in his head he was like we came all the way here for me to do this and now like i can't do it and like we're standing at the top because i had been slingshotting him in the whole time okay and he was like hey man like I'm super bummed I can't do this. And he's like, I kind of like want to make it up to everybody. He's like, I'm going to melon it naked. <laughs> like, All right. Did anyone down idea. below know that he was like, I think down? they had like an <laughs> idea that something strange was happening, but yeah, it was supposed to be a secret. Oh, so he didn't tell, he went back. Yeah. Why are you towing him in? Is it just something that he likes to do? He's done that a lot. Yeah, even when the, tiring. Yeah, even the Davis yeah. gap, he was being towed in, right? I mean, Dude, but you could push up. tries to, down fucking 20 stairs. So. Yeah. 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 I've never experienced that. He didn't really that. want to push in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been towed into a manual. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know what trick he was trying? He was before? trying to heel flip, right? Was he trying yeah. to heel flip? I think okay. he said it on the show. I yeah. think he did. I'm just yeah. trying to remember if it was something that was out there. Is it the same day he knows one of it? No. Um, I don't know why. For some reason, I wasn't skating that day. And then um, when we went back, to, we skated it together. He tried to heel flip again, mm. and I did the nose blunt. Okay. And it's just like a roll of the dice. Like the first time, he tried it 25 times. And the second time, I think like third try, Bruce's heel. Dude, 25 fucking times jumping down that thing. Fuck Could you imagine? That. Oh my That's god. Insane. I mean, the rail's a different thing. That thing's gnarly too. But to fly through the air? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the Nolly Nose Blunt probably took me about 20 tries. 20 tries? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you some on that too. When you did the Nose Blunt, like all the bushes were there. And when you did yeah. the Nolly Nose Blunt, all the bushes were gone. You didn't, did you cut those out? No. So that was kind of convenient because it's probably a lot easier to bail on that side if you needed to, right? You can't bail that rail and run down. Like, <laughs> no. It's so steep. Like if yeah. you're going to lock into the rail and you're going for it, you're probably going to go up to flat. Yeah. Even if you like jump off. I know it's a 20 stair rail. It's gnarly. It's a gnarly fucking rail. But does having that kind of bush or dirt on that side, does that help a little bit with your like mental aspect? Like if it was in the middle of some stairs. I wish I could have done it in the middle. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? Because that's fucking classic. Okay. That is, it's that fucking is gnarly classic. as fuck. No, yeah. that, I makes, know, that makes you like really go for it more, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But then on the Nolly Nose Blunt, there was definitely one that I turned out and I my back wheel stuck in the dirt because oh, yeah. the dirt comes about like that far past oh. the rail. That you it comes up like, about two and, and a half, three feet. Two and a half. Two, two, feet. two feet. Okay. Huh. Oh, so that. you got caught. And so you I hung turned out in my back truck just landed like right in the crack of the concrete and i fell forward and i was like oh my god gotta be kidding me was Jeez. which which one for you was like harder to do i mean the nose blunt i did that in like four tries <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely the nolly nose blunt was harder it's funny because some people are just a lot better at like i'll say ld uh justin eldridge yeah he yeah. could like nolly nose blunt like not, not that big of a rail but you know he'd probably be more comfortable with that some people are more comfortable with regular nose. Well, yeah, Nolly, you're on the nose already. Yeah. So. yeah. And you don't have that much far. You don't have far to go. Mm -hmm. You're nollying and you just kind of turn your mm -hmm. back. Nose blunt, you actually got to get you gotta get over it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but nose blunt, you have like the power. Like anyone who does nose blunts knows like they're like, when you really like throw it in there, you're like fucking going down. Right. Ground. Nose blunt, you're kind of, Nolly nose blunt, you're kind of placing it mm -hmm. a little bit because yeah. you're just kind of, huh. So why did you go back? I mean, you did the no, you did the nose one slide, and then a year later you go back and do the no, nolly nose one slide. Why? Um, I mean, you fuck you nose one slide. Yeah, I, I didn't think then, I never thought like nolly that. nose one would ever be possible on that rail. But were you trying? <laughs> were, were you were you just? Did you have that trick at that time? Nolly nose blunts, and you're like, oh well, fuck, I might as well just go to El Toro. Or yeah, no, I've been doing that for a good. long fucking oh, you have. time. So yeah, um, I just. The day I nose blunted it, like I said, Aaron hurt his heel, mm -hmm. and then it was kind of like the session was over. Oh, there was okay. like no need to keep it going. And um, but I knew I was like, oh, I, I know I could do this. Mm. And then so I just waited for the right time, like when I was really feeling it, and uh, fucking did it. So you think that if that session kept would have kept going, you probably would have ended up trying the nollie nose blunt that day as well. Possibly, yeah. It was it was anyone else skating it with you? Oh yeah, the first time Aaron. 
tried to heal Flynn oh, okay, yeah. himself. Mm-hmm. Second time, no, it was just me and Mills in the speaker blasting Ride the Lightning. Just you two. Yeah. How do you so hype yourself up? up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, Mills is my fucking boy. It was like we were going to fucking battle. Like me and him were like, let's go down there. I grew up skating there. Or like, there's a lot of the stuff that you could skate there. But uh, every time I would see someone come in, like Carlos Ruiz, and we back lift it. Mm-hmm. Dude, they, people would come with squads. Oh, yeah. They, they need hype. And then you just going by yourself is... I don't know. Hey, let's go down to El Toro. I think I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go check it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to, I was flying to Ohio in like two days and um, my grandma had passed away oh, and like sorry. I was going there like for my mom and to hang out yeah. and do the thing. And then I was like, fuck it, Mills. Like no better time than now. Like, like I'm going to, I'm about it. to jump on a plane. Yeah. Let's, wow. Mm-hmm. The yeah. first time you nose blunt slid it, you had to cut some knobs off right yeah because they were it wasn't knobbed but it was knobbed on the back side how how was how, how this going down i feel like that kind of like sparked um mills and i on like really like fixing up spots mm. i mean we'd always done it but i feel like that was like after that we were cutting knobs off everything <laughs> but um, <laughs> you brought a couple with you yeah i know could you get in trouble for that i, well, I don't, sure completely yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> i remember with the el toro knobs mm. Dane Berman, I think, had cut them off initially, and the they were like, so the rail's here, mm-hmm. and they did like an L, or reverse L, off the side of the rail, Okay. instead of being mounted on the actual bar that you slide, they were on like the supports of the rail coming up, oh. and um, he just cut them like down the middle, and there's still this piece like hanging out that far, Jeez. and so we went and just like cut them down a little farther huh. and i know there's a neighborhood next to el toro and i remember like thinking like oh fuck they're gonna hear us this and that and um there's something weird going on with like we forgot the proper batteries and we had to bring the generator out to charge the batteries and it was just a whole ordeal and i remember thinking like the community's gonna hear us but i mean saza ain't quiet and then, like, the, we had the to use a grinder too. to... Oh, the grinder. Well, still a grinder. Down, you're still... grinder, there's sparks flying. And, right. Mm. It's an L-shaped, but it wasn't on the top of the rail. So all day, he just had to, like, cut off just the side of it. Yeah, I think he back 5 would it, so he just had to cut... Right. ...the fucking the top piece off. And so in order for you to nose blunt it... We needed to shear it down the sides yep. for the wheels to slide. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Four tries. Mm-hmm. Were you happy? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> have you ever done four tries? Have I ever done tricking four tries? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fucking Ollie when I go warm up. <laughs> like 50 50s, you know? Sure. 50 50s. I feel you. Tricks normally take me like, if I get 50 tries, that's like, hell yeah. Like, let's go to the yeah. skate park. Like, oh, yeah. Seriously? Like, that was great. What's your, when you're getting warmed up to like do something, I mean, to you, is, is, this, just, is this stuff gnarly or is it kind of normal, the stuff that you skate? Because everything, I would look at it as completely gnarly, but do you, like have a thought process where you just get pumped up like do you start screaming shit or something i don't know i've seen you in videos like screaming nowadays that normally comes when i'm like really invested in the trick and Mm -hmm. it's like really beating me up um definitely when i was younger and just kind of learning how to skate big stuff like i would have to get pretty hyped and um but now i'm like pretty calculated when i go to big spots and like i like will really like look at it or like take a photo of it and like print it out, put it on my like little vision board. Oh, like, seriously? Whoa, about, whoa. Like, what I'm going to do. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, lo- I, lo- I actually it. love that. I That's know. fucking great. Yeah. So what spots are on your vision board right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's hear this, bro. Did you bring your vision board? I'd no, love to see no, it. No, I should have. God damn no. it. No, that's just for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, think about like what could go wrong and like if I'm going to bail, like how I'm going to bail it. You but really go through all that, that all that stuff. In being your head. able to think like you visualize it. where you're going to fall, yeah. I think helps me a lot to know like what's coming. Because I mean, no, first try, I'm definitely going to fucking bail. Yeah. How do you bail on something that gnarly? <sighs> that, so you would envision, first Maybe you envision how you're going to fall. Yeah. And you envision how you're going to fall first. And then you before. fall and you're like, well, that's just how I envisioned it. This is perfect. Okay, attempt number two. And then mm-hmm. you're like, how am I going to land it now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. God damn. But definitely, like, when I was younger, I wish, in hindsight, I wish I would have skated now how I skated when I was younger. 
not that I ever got like too fucked up and hurt me too bad, but okay. now I definitely am like smarter about the way I go about skating <laughs> stuff instead of just jumping down. There was one yeah. clip uh, I watched recently of you. I think you were trying to lip slide like the double or the shotgun oh, God. rail. Dude, everyone thinks they're like, were you trying to lip slide that or nose blunt that? <laughs> lip I was slide, trying right? to go in between them and like tail slide the no. inside bar and lip slide the outside yeah i was going what? for the fucking gusto i was like what's the coolest <laughs> fucking trick you could do Dude, on the, the most sketchiest right rail <laughs> that i could get caught in <laughs> what? Yeah. you like bounce off the leg there was so much like you must have so much adrenaline because you bounced off the ground oh yeah and got <laughs> laughing like, is uh, there's just so much adrenaline going through you that you just don't even, you just doesn't hurt you at all at that point? Dude, that was a really just fun trip in general. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bar Jones put that trip together. We were in Colombia and Medellin, and um, that was like after we had skated for like a week and a half. That was one of the like big tricks I wanted to get. Okay. And um, I don't know, just maybe like the way I'm built, I can get out of some falls. Like I was completely fine from that. I tried it like three times after that and we got Damn. kicked out. But yeah, I think even in the video you said like I, I ollie too high or something. Because I was, uh, yeah, I was fucking scared. And I was like, I'm going to go fast get and like over. make sure I slide down this thing. And that ground is like the best marble ever. And I didn't mm. expect it to pop so good. And like, I remember like popping and being like, oh shit, like, <laughs> here we go. Wow. It's funny. He's such like your skating. You're like the chillest dude right now. And you're, I don't know how the hell you're so gnarly on a skateboard when you're that calm all the time. It almost helps that yeah. <laughs> even, I think even, Je uh, wasn't Jeff Rowley saying that he, you know, you, the calmer, the better Yeah. when you're doing this gnarly shit, you really got to be focused. It definitely in gets control. to a point like, They'll definitely like we'll get like riled up and like get things going mm -hmm. and I don't know I just like the rush I like when I grew up that's what like I liked what I watched like mm -hmm. what got me psyched and were you a fan of Kurchart? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck. You know it. And I don't know I just I have fun and like afterwards like rolling away from something like that like that's when you're really hyped. I could imagine. Oh, yeah. Fuck. I don't know. After rolling away from a manual that you've been trying for six days, pretty good too. Yeah, I believe that. That's a good one. I've never experienced that, but <laughs> I believe it. Just try it sometime. Let me tell you. Yeah, I, I know, man. Shit. So your body's good. Mm -hmm. Feeling good. Mm -hmm. No recent big old falls or anything and bouncing off the ground and shit. I kind of hurt my hand recently. I fell on a hubba and I, uh, I thought. I didn't expect to land on it. I was too on top of my board, and I thought I was going to jump off, and then I just landed in rough ground and kind of, like, folded my hand down. But, ow. Yeah, just, like, some scrapes and eh. bumps and bruises. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, too, is that you're doing all these tricks. I mean, obviously, your street spots, but do pedestrians trip out on you? Dude, that's the weirdest thing. Sometimes people, like, see it, and they're like, oh, shit, like, that was crazy, and sometimes people really like it. But I trip on, like, when some, like a young dude or like a young girl will be like walking by and like, I'll like jump down this huge rail and they'll be like, whatever. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid kids. Yeah. I'm like, how do you guys not think that that's crazy like, well, to, for the average person? I when you know. lip slid down at the pier, the, the big rail down at the pier, Santa, Santa Monica, Monica pier, mm -hmm. it looked like there was a crowd, but not really a crowd. And it just didn't look like people were really, well, cause we were there at nine in the morning. Oh, was that nine oh, in the morning? Yeah. Oh. That was the only oh. way you could, I yeah. possibly skated that. Right. So much. No, has anybody ever skated that before? I don't think anybody had. I listened to uh, Rolly's, uh, is that, that's how he says he says R Rolly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to his nine club and he talked about, um, how he really enjoyed finding a spot that mm -hmm. was right mm -hmm. there in the open that no one had ever skated and stuff. Yeah. And that's how I felt when I like stumbled upon the, the pier rail. Cause I was just down there. I think I was with like a girl going to the arcade or something. Okay. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> on a hot date. And then, uh, Sounds like the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, little whack a mole. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I walked by the rail and I was like, "Holy shit! Like, there's a fucking like big rail off this pier." And I was like, "I don't think I've ever seen this in a video." No, and no. then the girl's probably like, "What the hell are you looking at?" I know. Dude? Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to go play skee ball. <laughs> I told her I was like, "I could slide down this banister <laughs> on my skateboard." She's like. Fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I mean, that only took two tries too, which was nice. Two tries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the most comfortable trick for you? Lip slide? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Is there any rail that has just been the most crazy for besides the water tower? We'll get into the water tower shit. Oh, but geez. besides that, is there? Well, um, so many. <laughs> when I Crook Staples Center, there oh. was like a uh, <laughs> yeah. Rogers, Rogers love. It. He's loving this. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like, so when I Crook Staples Center, <laughs> there's so many gnarly <laughs> tracks, yeah, dude. It's so I funny, know. dude. There was like a four year gap, maybe less than that, three year gap in between me trying it. The first time I tried it, I just stuck at the top and oh. flew to the bottom <laughs> and bruised my heel like Ooh. really fucking bad. Okay. and i just that was one of the like scenarios i told you about like when i was younger like i didn't really think it through i didn't wax it i was like oh i'll grind down this no matter what okay yeah. and like sure enough i stuck at the top and then jumped to flat and it's then a hard thing to test you know? yeah i, should, yeah. I don't yeah. even think i ran my board down it like we were just there and i was like <laughs> oh i know i could do this like let's do it right now and then that happened and then when we were filming the birdhouse video that was one of the tricks that oh no no we skated the uh that massive hubba we were talking about earlier oh in the ditch in the ditch yeah and i crooked that and jason and mills had the idea that we would put all that footage together because that session went down and amazing. then i was like i need a big another big crook and i was oh. like i'll go back to staples <laughs> well, i would have been like no use that one please i know <laughs> yeah. Don't. Yeah. I'm not i doing think that. some dudes were like <laughs> some dudes wanted to save their clips from it but i thought it was, oh, dude, I was like, just seeing yeah. the whole session was amazing it's great. Was, yeah, yeah. That was jason hernandez amazing yeah. mm-hmm. amazing dude how was it working with them on saturdays I loved it. Yeah. I love skating with Jason. He's great. He gets me hyped. He's like makes things look good mm-hmm. and he's all about like making a trick possible or like fixing a spot. Yeah. And, and that's what you want. Like mm-hmm. that's what you, some skaters need that. Yeah. You know, I know a lot handheld. of, huh? They need their handheld. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they're doing the trick. They have a lot of shit going on in their head. Some skaters like to help fix up the spots, mm-hmm. but I, some people, they need that time mm-hmm. alone, you know? And then like, same with Mills. He's got the same qualities and he'll like find something and be like, Hey dude, like, I think you could do this. Like, mm-hmm. I think like this is possible. And I like that. Like. I like people who are, are you motivated. Like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever has ever have you ever brought in a spot to someone and they're like, dude, you're crazy. You should not try that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they know his abilities though, bro. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. So Jason Hernandez working on the Saturdays video. Great fucking amazing video yeah by the way jaw dropping video you guys yeah. <laughs> killed it actually it was funny because like i watched it and then i'm like kelly you need to watch this and i need to like record oh you yeah watching this right i think if you record anybody watching it you're going to get a great yeah. reaction because it's fucking gnarly dude yeah i was I, sorry dude but i laugh at your footage sometimes because it's so fucked you know what i mean <laughs> it just keeps it keeps going and going i'm like a how'd you find that spot right how did you even try that trick and, and what were you, you thinking like, yeah, yeah yeah and he's just like he looks like Kevin Bacon. He's just like chilling, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Clive. I feel like a lot of us skaters, we we can't relate to a lot of the shit that you guys do. You know what I mean? A lot of skating is really relatable, but then when you go crazy, like your crooked grinding Staples Center hubba, it's like I don't know many people that can relate to that. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Well, so I didn't really grow ever. up skating the gnarliest shit, like. Obviously, Florida does have some gnarly spots, yeah. but it's pretty flat for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like I said, I skated for Fibro, and like a lot of the spots we were going to were not 20 stair handrails. Sure. Um, and I think just like a product of the dudes who I was hanging out with, mm-hmm. like seeing Aaron be able to jump down something huge every single day. And then I was like, dude, I like. I want to skate with this dude. And right. they just like conditioned my skating. Clint Walker. Mm-hmm. Fucking Clint was insane. When too. I met him, he was just skating the craziest fucking shit. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so I don't know. I just kind of jumped on the bandwagon and then, uh, filming the Saturday's video for all of us. I think I could speak for everybody where we all had a really good time and we were all like best of friends. We were going on these trips, like staying in Sick. shitty hotels, like in the van for hours at a time, just like really meshing well together and just making the most of the whole thing. And everyone was trying really hard, which made it great for everybody. Cause right. when just video. one person struggling, like that sucks. But when everyone's struggling, like it's fucking fun. Yeah. And that, that, that's important though. When you're making a big video like that, I mean, if you're, if all the writers are having fun, mm. that's, 
That's like the most important part. Yeah, it's dude. like dream come true. Yeah. How was it filming those skits you guys did? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, mine was easy. But, but, yeah. Who was your? Yeah. Who was the lady that was? Uh, uh, it was Patty Smith. Patty Smith. Mm-hmm. And then she did that. Did you request her, or did they yeah. just you? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. So did everyone request like someone they wanted to do a skit with? I don't think everyone requested it. Some people just ended up with what Tony could get. Mm-hmm. But um, it's just still amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a he got a little bit of pull. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit of pull. And I mean I asked Tony, I was like he when he said that he was doing the whole celebrity intros, I was mm-hmm. like, Well, I know I want to skate to Patty. Like, could you think you could get her to do an intro? And it worked out and it honestly like worked out better than I would have ever expected. Um I actually like kind of know Patty now. I know her daughter better. Oh, really? Jesse, yeah. Is she the one you went to the arcade with? No. Um, <laughs> I'm just checking. Just checking. No. Um, yeah. How did you get to know her? I mean, because you guys were I got to... this little pic in my pocket. We you got a picture in your... Elsewhere. Uh, no. <laughs> so Patty Smith gave me some... Oh, a pic. A guitar some, like, pic. Oh, I thought, thought you meant a picture. Things. And this was like her pic. And when she gave it to me, it came with like instructions. Like whenever you're doing something scary or something that you're like worried about, like keep this in your pocket. Like it will like give you like some strength and like, really? some extra power. And in that um, El Toro video, there's a really quick clip when I do the Nolly Nose Blunt where I like hold up the pic. And, oh, that's right. Like, show the camera. Really? Because it's, yeah, the pic that Patty Smith You gave. carry that with you every day? That's, yeah, because I was nervous to come on this That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hold it. You can hold it if you want. You know? <laughs> no, but that's... You're doing fine, dude. Because yeah. you weren't even in the skit where she just was like, to, you know, she just did something on her own and mm-hmm. they put it in the video. But yeah. then that's amazing that you kind of had that connection. She obviously researched you. Because she's, I mean, you do gnarly, scary shit, so... Yeah, I don't know if she looked pick. up the video. I don't even know if she's... I'm sure she's watched the video. Yeah. But then, um, so Tony and Kathy, Tony's wife, yeah. they introduced me to Jesse and... Um, her she, daughter? Her daughter, yeah. yeah. She invited me out to New York to go to this like benefit show they were doing. Um, they have an organization called Pathway to Paris. Okay. And... Um, it was kind of like founded around like the Paris Treaty and climate change awareness mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I got to go to that show. It was at Carnegie Hall. And um, Jesse introduced me to her mom and stuff. And I just became friends with Jesse. And this is after the video? Yeah, yeah. So she finally met you, the one that she did the intro for mm-hmm. at that, that at that yeah, time. That's, right. yeah. that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Was she like, oh shit, what's up? <laughs> or no, was she like, what? what she is was that? like getting ready for her show and like, I don't know, like Patty like came in and was just like sitting on the couch and she was just like, oh, like what's up? And I was like, oh, I introduced myself and we just. Did kinda, she know? She knew. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah. did you watch the show? Obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Damn. And um, that organization's still going. They're really trying to help the environment, which is pretty honorable. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Fuck yes. Um, yeah, the song went great with your part, by the way. Yeah, it's so. really good. Mm-hmm. Really good. Um, so Clint Walker and you in an RV, I'm still trying to get over this <laughs> fucking roomies on the road, roomies on the road. It's hard enough to live with somebody in, in an apartment, mm-hmm. let alone like trapped in an RV. Well, we also, we went on like trips, like personal trips and stuff in okay. between then. Um, like that, when I did that slam in Columbia that I went on that trip with Bart and mm. like just like would do, we would do our own things okay. and then we just would like come back to the RV huh. and, um, but yeah, we made great friends all over the United States and like dudes like who I still yeah. meet up with and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Skating dude. Mm-hmm. Fucking anybody's your, everybody's your buddy. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's insane. What a world we live in Raj, huh? Yeah. Skateboarding world. Did you guys <laughs> take turns driving the RV? I never drove the RV. You it, was, it was like Clint's RV. Right. So he like, and then we didn't. So we didn't drive the RV to spots, dude. We weren't like pulling up in a handrail. I was gonna ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was. I was picturing a car with you the entire time. Yeah, right. towed a car, and then um, we would find a place to park. Like Chicago was pretty wild. We parked at um, Wilson Skate Park for a while, mm-hmm. and then uh, the cops kicked us out of there. Or I went to Barcelona. I missed a lot of that month though but oh, sure. when i came back the rv had been moved to just a side street like next to like a target and like it's funny there's like a 
long strip of grass next to the curb is parked on and there's just like random parking and in front of the rv it was completely flattened out and everywhere else was just like nice lush grass because like everyone would just hang out like lay down in front of the rv <laughs> and be outside. like we really made the curbside our home your home mm. right bring out chairs barbecues mm. yeah that's right a, on the side of the street in dude, Chicago. That's it. Goes to downtown. That's insane. Wow. And then um, a lot of places we go, like we'd meet skaters. They'd have us like park in their backyard, which was a luxury because then we could yeah. plug the RV in, have some power. Have like, a shower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The yeah. most miserable time we stayed in Kansas City behind Escapist, and we couldn't plug the RV in, and it was like pretty damn cold if we we left milk out one time and came woke up in the morning the milk was completely frozen it was what? frozen yeah <laughs> it was so Jeez. cold hey because sometimes frozen That's... milk it could a little nice little slushy mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, know especially some that. strawberry milk <laughs> <Milk's> <laughs> good, <right? laughs> strawberry you love milk, your milk chocolate milk but listen dan wouldn't let you plug in what's going on dan we were like kind of far away like oh, we okay. were like there's like a back alley and so we were like did i make such a clear long enough there. no no <laughs> Did you ever have like any people trying to like rob your shit or like break in or anything? Never in the RV. Obviously, mm. like every skater knows it when you're out like skating at some spots. Sure. Like, dudes will like come up and try to flex on you, which actually happened in Kansas City. Oh wow! And um, but no, someone slept on top of the RV one time. <laughs> it was like a local skater. I think his name was Yo-Yo. He was from <sighs> Chicago, and he had been sleeping in Wilson in the bowl at Wilson, and then something weird happened where like he was sketched out and he like climbed on top of the RV and slept on top. Did of you know RV. he was there? When we woke up in the morning, we knew. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> he was up okay. You get on birdhouse 2012 ish, right? Yeah. 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 King of the road starts the next year. Pretty much 2013, yeah. 13, mm-hmm. 2014, 2015, three P you guys win. Mm-hmm. All three fucking years. Yeah, how is it going on those trips? Yeah, an accomplishment. I mean, seriously, Raj. It was cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, you go on Bur- you go on King of the Road a year after you get on. I don't know. We just skated, did our thing. People's feelings got hurt. It's a- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we all had a great time. Like between us, like I know, like me and Aaron, that was like at the height of my smoking career well, me and him were just okay. fucking stoned the whole damn time like, <laughs> doing tricks that we didn't necessarily want to do but we made the most of it so you get and then so you win the first year mm-hmm. right yeah cool we won king of the road and then they're gonna okay we come back as the reigning champion defending champions mm-hmm. and then do you guys have it in your mind like oh fuck yeah we're gonna fucking we're gonna we're gonna repeat this bitch dude i don't know i just i think that um the way we planned out challenges and the way we use like time management mm. is really what set us ahead of everyone. I'm pretty sure every year we won by like a thousand points. Seriously. Yeah. Like a landslide. So you guys would literally get the book, see all the challenges and everything, and then who would plan out this the time management and everything? Jerome was really good at it. Okay. Pretty sure Jerome might have got his job at Thrasher from Killing on King of the Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then um, Clint obviously was like so gung ho about like getting shit done, making it happen. And hmm. he's like pretty witty and smart dude. So he came up with like a lot of funny things that we did. Okay. And Did you guys then, have a technique to make out? I don't know. Um, I made out with quite a few girls. <laughs> yeah. I also had. You're like, I'll take that hair one. hair and bleached eyebrows. I look pretty crazy. <laughs> so I think they were like, they were like, oh, who's this weird looking guy with the camera? Like, they were intrigued. How did you, what did you just go up to him and be like, hey, I need some points for this thing we're doing. Can I make out with you? Yeah. And I'd show him the book. I'd show him that it was real. And then. Um, Plus you have a whole crew with you. But you guys said like, much. you kind of like forced it by being like, we have like only like two minutes to do this. Yeah. Yeah. We would kind of oh. maybe stretch the truth a little bit. Yeah. Like, I like that. Instead That's of te- interesting. Sometimes instead of telling them that um, we have to make out with the most girls, which is not very appealing. No. <laughs> it would be like, I have to make out with five girls in the city. Okay. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, sure. Like, yeah. okay. Oh, that's not bad. And then um, <laughs> the most that I've made out with like 50 chicks in one night. 50 uh, <laughs> Clive, what are you doing? You're just walking down the street, or what's no, going on? I was Beast Kelly's record. A, I know, Jesus. You know, Raj started carrying a rule book around with him after that. 
That's a great idea, by the way. I know. We're just like one, two, three, four. Yeah, what <laughs> Clive, what's going on? How did that something happen? Something like that. Um, no, it was in Pittsburgh. Okay. And Smolik was getting tattooed. <laughs> I think it was Peter's first fucking tattoo, or maybe he only had like two other tattoos. Okay. And he got Thrasher shoulder to shoulder. On his back, like Holy he was down. We were like, shit. Yeah, down for life. Wow. Um, incredible. and yeah, he did that. So that was like a pretty big ordeal. And okay. I just stood in front of the tattoo parlor with the filmer, and every chick who walked by, like, talked to him, and made out with <laughs> fifty chicks. While he was, <laughs> <that too. laughs> was it weird at first when you're like, okay, fuck, I gotta. Obviously, you get your stick down. You know, you, you're saying like, oh, I gotta make out with a couple chicks. We got the filmer. We got the thing. But in the beginning, was it like bizarre? Like yeah. trying to approach these the girls. The first and two days, I was like, fuck this, this sucks. And then like it became pretty easy. You get like, the hang of it. Yeah. Because what are they? Got, if they're like, gonna, they're gonna say yes or no. Yeah. They're gonna say no. Up, they're like, gonna move on. Just talking to them, be like, hey, I don't want to do this, but which like I really didn't. And honestly. For speaking of time management, make a make out challenge. It's only worth like 50 points. It's the worst thing you can do with your time. Like oh. if we didn't happen to be in scenarios where I was, like I wasn't going out looking for chicks. Like you're just, just yeah, like, you're killing happened? time. You're killing time. Yeah. yeah, okay. Like 50 points, like whatever. Yeah. Okay. Kind of what each make out is 50 points, or we're just no, one? No, 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 no. How many the do you have to make out challenge. with? You have to make out with the most. But it's only 50 points for the for the whole challenge. <laughs> Yeah, so but still, listen. Yeah. Still every a fun challenge. Fun yeah. challenge. Yeah. Like I said, Raj has Kinda. a rule book in his back pocket yeah. right now. He's going to go to the bar. <laughs> but <laughs> you want to tell Raj this? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, every point counts. Every you could uh, if you. What, what if you guys lost by fifty points? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. You got Roger hyped on that one for sure. No. <laughs> Roger's like King of the Road 2020. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm single. Let's go. So you're okay. So that that was the this was the first King of the Road we're talking about, or the second one? No, that was the second. Year second we year. Went on okay, mm. and then you guys went again. Mm. And again. Round two, and then third year, you guys have to be like, okay, this is the, the, let's three. We're gonna three peat this. I don't know. I think by the third year, some of us were like pretty burnt on it and just <laughs> oh really. The flow. What was the the hardest challenge that you had? I don't know. Some of the fucking ledge tricks. Somehow I ended up doing like a ton of fucking ledge tricks, which was okay. <laughs> pretty crazy. Was there one ledge trick that you were just like, I don't know how I landed that? I did a switch shove at nose grind one time. <laughs> that <laughs> one was sick. Time. Never did that ever again. Wait, switch front side shove it or switch pop shove it? Switch pop shove it. And then, um, well, I mean, we had like Ben. Ben would just like Ben's that tranny amazing. page. Like we'd go to one skate park and it'd be like, destroy it. All done. It must have been fun, though. Great yeah, experience. We had, I mean, we made the most of it. We yeah. had a good time with each other. And yeah, I've never been on one. Nor do I. I mean, I would like to go, but... If mm. chocolate like hit you up today... To go on one? going King of the Road, would you go? Yeah, I'd go. Fuck yeah. It, that's an experience, Yeah, Raj. That's, what, that's sure an experience. Like, I, I wouldn't be doing any drinking piss, any of that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I'd just be driving the van. I'd be driving the van. <laughs> I mean, you know? honestly, you take from it whatever you want yeah. and we all had a great time mm -hmm. and like like i said that like built up to the camaraderie that we had in the saturday's video like right. we we're all like dude we've been through king of the road like we can film a video like, seriously, seriously like, yeah. yeah that's amazing dude congrats on that that's three p to me i don't think anybody's ever done that i think zero zero three p zero that yeah. yeah, makes sense mm. i can see that dude you were mic'd up the whole time more or less did you feel weird like that you would say something that you didn't want to say or something. Or I heard like, a lot of dudes like were scared like when Vice came on being mic'd up. We did oh. it the first year with Vice and yeah, I'm sure they probably went through so much audio of me and Aaron in the backseat of that van just like, oh, like <laughs> these kids are so fried. Like, <laughs> but, um, and then some of my buddies went on it the year after and I told them like, dude, like they're not trying to make anybody look bad. They're not going to pull audio that doesn't relate to the show. Right. And so like, yeah, you don't have to worry yeah. about it. Like that's cool. No. They're yeah. they're trying to make a story as exactly. well. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's gonna be fucking tough right there. Being a story imagine? writer for that? Yeah, was there a producer on it for each van too? Like a make, making sure that they I don't they know were if getting their title the, was producer, but someone, there someone was like a head, head like dude. a showrunner type yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, there's a head dude from head dude. Yeah. ours was uh, Trevor Cushing's. Oh, and he killed it, and okay. I became Good great dude. friends with him. So it's amazing, bro. There, and when we did We Are Blood, I know that they went through some of the interviews. And Trevor also worked on We Are Blood, and I'm sh I did so many interviews with that. And he was like, "Man, like I 
I thought you had a few cool things to say. And but like that's another thing they probably went through so much footage on that. Like, what are these kids talking about? Like, <laughs> wait, what do you mean? Uh, we are blood. Because um, through well, all the Mesa was there, so we, like, overseeing the edit for what King of the Road? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Advice. But what what does the We Are Blood have to do with it? Because well, we did kind of the same thing. We did like a lot of interviews for that, like going to areas and like like in Dubai, they were yeah. always like having like we called it like a story cam where they'd like interview us on like the experience that was uh, going on. Okay. Did you skate up on the helipad up there? Mm hmm. Dude, that how was, was that? fucking sick. No, because you, you guys had to stay stand or cause if the board fl- flew out, you had to catch it. Catch it, yeah. Because you guys. I mean, what? But so that was the like eeriest part was like when you stood around to uh-huh. watch for the board, that's when you felt the thing move because it's like built to look like a, a spinning top. And so, and it actually would move on the sides. But when you were skating, you didn't feel it. You didn't move feel it. You were right in the middle. Okay. Yeah. But standing on the side, like the wind, like going through you, you could like look over and there's like oh ocean down gosh. there. Like, that was when you're wild. on the edge, though, I mean, it's not like you, we were three it, feet from the edge. Okay, but if you if you stumbled back, what would it, how far would you fall? I mean, fifty something stories you probably could potentially fall onto the valet. <laughs> the valet, below. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Sorry about your Bugatti, man. Yeah. Fucking, wow, that's sketchy, dude. Did anything not weird a, happen? Like, did anyone's board shoot out? One shot out to me, and I kind of like stood there. But like for me, it was like so between us. I think there was like six of us around, mm-hmm. and then they were like. These dudes in like men in black suit uniforms standing between us, and they took it like really serious. Yeah, I'm but sure. But like for me, like the board shot at me, I was like, it's a fucking skateboard. Like grab happens it. at the skate park every day, and I just stood there and like picked my foot up and stepped in the middle of it. But and if it went over the edge, though, it could. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would probably pop off the curb and go down. Yeah, yeah. But Ty told me he was like, dude, I was watching that from the helicopter, and people were like pretty freaked out. Like, <laughs> you didn't take it that serious, but I was like, dude, it's like a skateboard. Like I'm gonna get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't shut down the hotel or anything for it's that. It's a five star hotel. Yeah, they didn't want the people in the hotel to know we were there. We had to go up through a service elevator, like we were like oh. James Bond style up in that joint. Wow. Yeah. How long were you in Dubai? I was there for 30 days. So you were in Dubai for 30 days? And I'll never go back. Really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> that was enough for me. I always did wanted to go to Dubai. Did you Raj go to Abu Dhabi? Is... No. Abu Dhabi has all the spots. Does it? Yeah. Well, dude, there was that well, spot we that Clint skated was off the... Was that, was that in Dubai? Uh, that was the, unreal, yeah. The 50-50. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The... Dude, we got to skate pretty much anything. Like, we had a dude with us. His had name carte was blanche Muhammad, and, the, and mm-hmm. he would, like, dudes try to kick us out of the spot. He'd walk up and be like, here's the deal. Like, yeah. they're skating here. Then wow. they'd be like, okay. Yeah, they'd be like, ooh. And because they, they, they would fix the spots afterwards too, right? If there was a marks or whatever. We one spot where they brought in flowers to line the side of the hubble ledge to make it look prettier. Really? The wow. They were really serious about the image. Oh, they wanted it to look, oh, okay. Yeah. It still looks a little desolate. So they were set designing. They were set mm-hmm. designers yeah, too. Yeah. They said, oh, we'll get some flowers. Hold on, we're going to go to the... F- <laughs> we can go to the flower shop around well, the corner. I was working with uh, the production company there. It's owned by like, the Prince or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah it's called uh, Dubai Film. Yeah. And it's the only company in Dubai that's allowed to have the name Dubai come first in the title. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty serious yeah. deal. Wow. So you would just see a spot, pull over. No, or we it had like a out. pamphlet of spots that we could like look through that were aesthetically pleasing oh. that the government had approved for us to skate. Wow, it's what? Pretty crazy. That sounds insane. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wait, so how did that happen though? You just had a local person, local skater, so get, get spots and Ty get them flew approved. flew in early oh. and scouted like through the whole city <laughs> yeah. and was like, oh, that's a tenster hubba. That's yeah. good. Like that's whatever and ty is great at knowing who's who's going with and what they mm. could potentially skate yeah. as well speaking of like filmers who are really go-getters like skating with ty i love every second of talk that. about yeah. a go-getter yeah yeah he, he, is, he goes like, and gets he has yeah. so much hype he makes it so fun like yeah. he'd be like come on like let's get this like I know. Yeah. was he yelling from the helicopter <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> probably i gotta make my way out to dubai one time bro did you visit the eye the the little islands the little uh, man-made. I went to the Palm, Palm Islands. Palm Islands. Skydived yeah. over the Palm. Skydived over. What? You went up in a 
plane or a helicopter? Plane. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you wear a wingsuit with smoke coming out of it? No, no. I wore a Spanish guy. <laughs> you wore you wore a Spanish guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, he was sick. He got me hyped and he's yeah, your backpack. Great uh, instructor for the first time jumper. I mean, listen, were you? Was it a scary? Are you? Do you have a problem with heights or anything? Or? I don't think no. he does. No the spots he skates. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Challenge play first. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like you're going up at a plane with, and they open the fucking door, and then you got the Spanish guy. Yeah, no, the instructor was great. Like he was like, dude, we got this. Like this is gonna be sick. You're about to have the time of your life. And I was okay. like, all right. Like afterwards, like I gave him the biggest hug. I was like, thank you so much. Like that was the best experience in my life. Wow. Cause it really does give you like a crazy when you're done, like, Oh, like, Oh, like a perspective, like a euphoric feeling oh. when you're fly, flying down. And then afterwards, like you feel like, so empowered, like I could do anything. Like I just you don't get the same feeling plane. from like nose one oh Toro. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I don't think anything is quite the same as skydiving. I couldn't imagine doing it. Like I'm sure doing it by yourself mm-hmm. is tenfold what sure. I did. But yeah. yeah, like I feel like I'm sure like the instructor does it with so many people. Yeah. But like for me, I'm like, dude, I love that. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I got a special bond with yeah, him. Yeah. But what I mean, did, were there other did other people jump at the same time, or were you just solo? It was like one at a time. Okay. Um, and before I went, so we walked over. We did it as high as you can jump, tandem jump. Mm. It's uh, fifteen thousand feet. Okay. And we walk over to the door, and uh, JP was like strapped into the side of the door with like his red camera, like filming us. Like oh, no para- oh, he had no parachute. He was no, just strapped no, he's in. Just strapped into the threshold, like filming the experience. And um, so me and my instructor like waddled over. Yeah. He's like pretty much like taped to your back. Sure. And then we sat down. And he like whispered in my ear. He's like, "You want to flip out of this thing?" And I was like, "Yeah." Of course. <laughs> and then all he said was like, "Pull your knees up and grab your ankles." Like as soon as we like push out, and like without even giving me a second to think, he just pushed us out. And like it was like clockwork. I was like, Whoop. "Grab your ankles!" <laughs> and then flipped out of there. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> yeah. It was sick. And then we flattened out and like did the free fall. And- Holy <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You have video of it? They film it? I do. I have yeah. a little USB with the whole experience oh. on it. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if I'd. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would. I mean. Some people Tandem. didn't like it. Some people didn't like really. No. Because it's didn't. a lot of pressure like coming yeah. at your face and like you can't. Some people couldn't breathe and were like panicking. Oh, that. really? Yeah. I was like screaming the whole time. So psyched. And I remember the instructor kept like reaching under me and like. Closing, closing your mouth, mouth. <laughs> like, because I'm sure they're spit, like, oh, yeah, oh. Back off. <laughs> I was like, Fuck yeah. it's like, yo, I know he just front fl- fl- flipped out of this thing, but yo, you're spitting in my face. Uh. Damn, I just don't know if I could, I, I'd, I'd be like one of those statistics. Be, if you couldn't breathe and you were flying towards the earth, that'd be kind of scary. Well, but the free fall is only like 50 seconds, it okay. feels a little bit longer, and yeah. then the actual like parachute, parachute. glide that's when you're like. All that adrenaline like rushes out of you, and that's when you get like the crazy, almost like a like a high type. Oh feeling. wow! And you can enjoy the views mm-hmm. and see everything, and even talk to the guy a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he gave me like the controls and was like, you could pull to the left and spin. Oh wow! And control it. Yeah. But then I just gave it back to him. I was like, dude, I want to enjoy this. Yeah. Like, I don't need to fuck around anymore. Yeah. I'm not trying to fucking train right here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Roger, would you do it? I would try tandem. Yeah. 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 Be. I think it'd be easy, like when someone's strapped to your back and that knows what to do. Yeah, but dude, like, getting right. on top of that, like, okay, we're, we're, we're just going up. for a ride. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah but I don't, it's like I don't a think roller coaster. You yeah. know yeah. you're gonna be safe. Yeah. You right. know you're yeah. with an experience. But you can't do it by yourself though. You have to yeah. have so <laughs> you have to have so many jumps. Yeah, in time. Totally. I think Leticia has done it by herself. I think really? I've seen video of her doing it by herself. Wow. Yeah, really? she's probably done a bunch Bob. of Red, Red Bull, huh? Bob Berkowitz. Oh, Bob, dude, on King of the Road. The last time we did it with Vice, um, it was the most insane day I've ever seen in my life. Like, Aaron went above and beyond. He, uh, we started the day off. Uh, Jerome split from us, went to Birdhouse, and started building the loop. One of the challenges was to do a full pipe. Oh, wow. And he started building the loop. And uh, I think that's how he got on with, like, Tony and stuff. He used to, like, build the ramp and move the vert ramp and stuff. Oh, wow. Oh. And so he was doing that, and we went to Bob's house, 
Aaron did part of the mega ramp, mm-hmm. naked, covered in shaving cream. <laughs> <laughs> did all the challenges that Bob had because he was the only one who could do them. Sure. Then Bob was like, just as a joke, oh, I jumped out of the helicopter into the mega ramp that day. What do you... It was oh. fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forget about How this. do you know how to do that? <laughs> um... No, it wasn't anything is, super crazy, but um, the helicopter was there, and I remember... Who was flying it, Bob? No. <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> I wish. That would be fucking legendary. I, couldn't, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Bob flew a fucking yeah. helicopter. It was um, his, like, his homie, his okay. like, pilot, who sure. like, he does his stuff with. And they were like, all right, so Aaron did all the crazy fucking jumps and mm-hmm. gnarly fucking vert type shit. And they were like, all right, the last challenge, someone's got to jump out of the helicopter. And right when they said that, I happened to be in the right place. I was like, I called dibs. Like, I'm jumping out the helicopter. And so we just, like, at first I wanted to do a flyby. You just jump into the landing ramp, which is still a pretty big bank. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, so you're, like, holding on to the side of the chopper, and then you have your board here, and you just pretty much bomb drop into right. it. And at first I was, like, kind of nervous. Like, I was like, I don't know how fast I'm going to go, whatever. I was like, let's do, like, a flyby. And then on the second one, I'll jump. Okay. But then, like, once we got in the air and we're over it, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, the later <laughs> dude like, jumped into it and just, like, rode down it. And I, like, did the the bank and then went up the quarter pipe. And I was going so fast that, like, I can't fucking air on a vert ramp. Right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was going so fast up the other side that I bailed at the coping and was over the coping, like, oh, no. oh. and then landed in and just slid down on my back. Oh, oh so you dropped you, you dropped in from the helicopter into the roll in into the the landing the, the landing, landing part, yeah. right the, oh, and then uh, that's scary dude. when yeah. I was on the helicopter I was like I love the smell of napalm in the oh morning oh my god yeah. <laughs> they put that in there with like the the sun, rise, rise sure. of the Valkyries I wonder how but I mean like how far above the ramp were you six feet oh. Probably where I landed. Still, travel, still uh, so helicopter, gnarly. Like this, uh, Did they hover? I or they just wanted a... the experience. Like I'm yeah. jumping out of right. the helicopter. I mean, Jaws would have done it or... if you didn't do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Enchanting anyone cream. would have done it. I was just the first one to be like, I called the helicopter. Okay. Okay. At first, I, I thought you meant you were going into the quarter pipe. That's what so I thought. I was like too. Danny Way type shit. I was like, I don't. Uh, I guess Aaron could probably do. Ben would yeah. probably do ben, that. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. was fun. You're insane. <laughs> um, oh no so oh. that day yeah yeah so we do aaron does all the mega ramp stuff that day does one it's like the euro gap that bob made mm-hmm. he did oh, that yeah. in shaving cream aaron's huge. dad was with us too okay one of the challenges was like bring your parent on the session and after that we went back to birdhouse mm-hmm. um and he did the loop Okay. Kick flipped off of the stage afterwards after doing the loop. Did you was, try that? You didn't even want to try the loop? You was like, no, no. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was not for me. <laughs> um, so he did the loop, and then we went from San Diego. We drove up. I think they're in Pasadena. Those pull jam rails where you pull jam over the back, go down the rail. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like a six stair. Mm. One of the challenges was to dark slide a handrail. Aaron dark slid that handrail. Okay. And then we were driving back down to San Diego from there. And it's a long drive. No. Back. We yeah. It's the same up, day? Same day. Wow. And we end up at El Toro just to check it out. <laughs> oh, no. and just to check it out. Did he put his out. fucking magic gloves on? Yeah. And <laughs> no, Heath was like, yo, know, like, Aaron was like, I could ollie this naked for the naked challenge. It's like 12 o'clock at night by now. Okay. Maybe later. And he was like, I'll give you all my prize money if you ollie this naked right now. And then, but we... He yeah. ended up not doing it. We're like, dude, you did the mega ramp today, you did the loop, and then you dark slid a handrail. Hell, Hell of a day. Wow. <laughs> Hell of a day. Oh, oh yeah. Holy yeah. shit. And almost all he did naked. Or t- was, naked. Yeah. I can barely get one clip in a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Fucking takes seven days. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, pretty wild. I've never even been in a helicopter, Clive. I was like, that was the first time I've ever been in a helicopter, too. Yeah? Yeah. I mean... I guess so I, these I never really got inside. But he's hovering. You didn't even get inside? Uh, that's they how took we got off on from the subject, the... though. Skydiving. So after I did the helicopter thing, okay. Bob came out with a backpack with the, the skydive chute and was like, all right, Aaron, now you have to go skydiving solo. 
No. And Aaron was like, like Bob was obviously joking. But oh, Aaron okay. was like, looks at all. Like we were all in on the joke. Aaron's dad was in on the joke, and his dad was like, "You got it! Like you gotta oh. do it!" And he put the suit on and was like, uh, "I guess so." Like, are you going up with me? Had he ever skydived before? No. no. And, <laughs> and Bob was like, "No, dude. Like you're not going skydiving." You're gonna kill Josh. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> but he was just so down. Like, oh my god! Yeah. Could you imagine? I talked to a guy in Dubai who had done three solo jumps, and he said two out of the three he had to pull the secondary chute. Oh, the first one, his like, because you have to like have your body right when you mm-hmm. do it. And the okay. first one, he started spinning and tangled his suit, and he had to pull a knife out and cut the suit, oh, and then pull the secondary. Oh, okay, that's too much. Talk about freaking even, out, dude. How do you even like yeah. train for be, that? They do that indoor. Oh. In Even pulling a shoot? They're not pulling a shoot indoors, are they? I don't think so, but that's I imagine cool. that's how you learn how to position Control your body. Your body now, yeah. I, back in the day, I'm, yeah. I don't know. They were just like... Okay, Bob, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Arms out straight, Bob? Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <what? laughs> Unbelievable, bro. Anything else? Bungee jumping? What, what else do you want to do? I've I mean, you've kind of done it all. I don't know what else there is. I don't want to go bungee jumping. No. I went to... Um, when I was a kid, my dad and I, I told you, used to travel around Europe all the time. Okay. And we went to a place where people were bungee jumping, and um, I guess he was just driving me up there to show me, like, to watch people do it. And I was like, all right, so are you going to sign me up? He was like, no. Like, are you kidding? Yeah. Like, hell no. And you didn't do it. I was like, why'd you bring me here? Like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. Just wanted sign to watch, me up or let's go. I just wanted to watch people <laughs> bun- bungee jump. Yeah. Do you, so you didn't do it? No. I no. wasn't allowed to do it. What do your, what do your parents think of your skating? Do they trip out when they watch you jump down shit or see videos? Yeah, my mom, she's really supportive of it. And she just knows that uh, it makes me happy and sure, that I yeah, like doing sure. it. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Um, when I showed her the footage of the water tower, oh, she man. was uh, freaked out a little <laughs> bit. And then I explained her to her that I was like, oh, that's like once in a lifetime type spot. Like You don't really have to worry about me doing that again. And she's actually reminded me that I told her that a few times talking on the phone. She's like, you know, you told me that you're not going to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. What did you find the next one? Oh, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Well, since we're on the subject, water tower, mm-hmm. people compare it to the Jeremy Ray Ollie water tower thing, kind of in the same, uh, maybe because it's just water towers. <laughs> but it's still, bro, mm-hmm. these things are like... Sketchy. To say the least, Raj. I mean seven eight stories ten stories high i don't even know how uh, you threw your board down and it looked like it took fucking 10 seconds for it to fuck hit the ground i think the one i skated was the taller one mm-hmm. i think was about 60 feet okay and the other one was about 50 Bro, somewhere in i mean there. you're up 60 feet up in the air what so <laughs> the, the one we took off from it was it was flat ground no that's uh, what i was gonna say because it landed it looked like it was like uphill little, I explain like most of it in the my war. It's like hard. To okay, well, who yeah. cares about yeah. that? Yeah. Let's talk about. Let's, let me. Uh, uh, who? Okay, first of all, you went there a, a, a few times before, yeah. right? Just to, you checked it out. You you cut some rails off of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I went there four times. Four times, and um, the first time. We, uh, Mills and I drove out. Mills had saw it from his car coming okay. home from Did camping. he take a photo of it? And he just no said, photo, hey, nothing. I have this spot. He just Come remembered it where it was and was like, it could possibly be skating. Skatable. And, um. You get there, you look at. So we drove, like, it's a fucking ordeal just to get out there. Mm-hmm. And so we drove out there. We, like, have to, like, fucking get over this barbed wire fence, like, fucking just figuring all that out was an ordeal. Okay. And then um, we get over to the, the tower, the silo. Mm-hmm. I think they're technically silos. Okay. And um, there, so there's a spiral ladder or staircase going up the side of the, the silo. Right. And it had been cut off at 12 feet. Yeah. And so... We're like, well, fuck, like we drove all the fucking way out here. Like we need to know if it's actually skatable. And so I stood on Mills' shoulders and Mills is like six, four, like he's tall enough. And okay. then like I was reaching up and, um, they're like, 
like grate style stairs and I just got my like tips of my fingers <laughs> inside the grate and Mills stepped away and I was hanging there and I was like, Oh well fuck, like I guess I'm going up. Like here we go. <laughs> and pulled myself up. Okay. And then went up there and checked it out and mm-hmm. saw that there was like nothing in front of the rail. There's obviously a bunch of fucking sketchy shit on the landing. Mm-hmm. But there was like a path that you could land on if you land perfectly straight mm. on the, the left rail. Okay. And um, I checked it out. I like took some photos on my phone. I ran down. And then Mills and I took off. And we talked about it the whole drive home. And then I was chilling at home later that night, like, thinking about it. And I was like, dude, like, I can't fucking remember. Like, if you've ever, like... I guess the only thing I could fucking really relate it to is like if you've ever gotten like a fight or something where your adrenaline's like really pumping, like you can't really remember it afterwards. Yeah. Sure. And then like being up there was like that. Like I couldn't like my adrenaline must have been going so fast I couldn't really remember it. And then so we're like we talked about it and we had, I had the photos on my phone where I was like, Oh, we need to go back and check it again. So then we went back with the the folding ladder mm-hmm. and um Mills went up there with me and we both checked it and then we saw like the flaws with the spot like what needed to be fixed Mm -hmm. just you two just us two and then so we drove home and then we went back the third time and uh because the rails were only about like this far apart where like if you tried to skate it you would hit your face on that rail for sure right and so we cut out the the rail that's on the right side, which isn't skatable anyways, because there's, like, a huge... Mills explained it, like, a cauldron. There's a huge, like, vent thing that's at the bottom oh, where yeah. you have to land, like, perfectly fucking straight on the left rail. Left rail's out of the question. The right rail's out of the question. I'm sorry, right, right rail. rail. Yeah. Left rail. Question. You gotta land, like... You cut out the whole hand no, or just, just the top? we just cut where the, the top where you'd portion hit your head. where oh. you hit your face on it. And then... The fourth time, yeah, we talked to Burnett, and we went out there, and we did it. Because you're up there, and the footage, uh, to me, looked very rusty. It looked like, you know, things have been there for a <laughs> while, and you're, you're jumping up and down on that thing. I think you even said you threw, like, a big old, rock. like, rock on it to see if yeah. it, you could. I mean, if you fell through, you're, you're talking about falling biggest, 50 feet that's into, a, into a silo. If you fell through, you'd die. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So the first and try you, was really, really nerve-wracking. <laughs> um, and they're empty. They were they were oil silos, so they oh. were once filled with oil. Wow! And um, yeah, they were empty. Like you okay. hear it, like echoing mm-hmm. and vibrating. And like uh, I remember the sound from when I was a kid growing up, because Kenny Space Center is there, and when they'd launch the rockets, like the sonic boom, like if you had windows or a sliding glass door, like it would it ripple yeah. yeah and it was the same sound that it would make when you walk on that like you take a step and it <laughs> like come up behind okay. you huh. and so like you obviously know that they're empty and sure. just like walking up there is so eerie when we Mills and I went back actually a fifth time to film the clips for the my war and that was the worst time why it was really windy we Wait didn't a minute. you oh filmed you filmed you did it twice what do you mean you no, filmed No, no, no. Um, just so to show the spot. All oh, the clips to show. The My War oh, gotcha. were from the fifth time we went there. And so, like, we didn't necessarily have to be up there. And it was really fucking windy. And each, like, that's when, like, I think every time before that, I was so, like, we're going to fucking do this. Like, yeah. We're doing this for a reason. Like, that time, I was, like... What are, what are we, we doing? doing? Let's get out of here. Yeah. And those two was like freaking out and like seeing him worried too. I was like, fuck, man, like, come on. Like you're on top of this. Yeah, and we're from... walking around. You really feel it moving and just like, I guess wow. like bubbling in and out. Yeah. I don't know how to really explain it. And um, and you have to worry about getting arrested. That's right. So yeah. I was. I mean, you've been there four times dude, yeah. and now you're going how, there for a fifth time. How long can our luck yeah. run sure. before like we've. Their cops are waiting for us. Like, God. it looks like he's in the middle of nowhere. Sure. Yeah, it's far out, but there, like, there are, is like an access road next to it, and they had moved the um, the facility a mile down the road where people still work, and there's new silos. Oh, so that that, that was kind of an abandoned silo. They, they I think, moved um, it. There was an explosion there and it got shut down. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, Jesus yeah, it was pretty eerie. Was, like, the way that the spot was, you just, like, the only trick that could really do is board slide? Or was that, like... For me, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, and that's like the classic move, like rail slide, yeah, like yeah. first trick on Would the Would you be bummed if someone went there and 5 would it? Ain't nobody going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it's steep, right? I mean, please be safe. Yeah. <laughs> go there. Fuck. Um, but yeah, and I just thought like, board side, like you're hanging the board over, like it's like a classy looking trick. Sure. Like it really like, yeah. I've... I, in my head, I was like, "That's because I was like, maybe like crook." Cro- I was gonna say, but crooks. then you're like safety zone on the inside, like board side to a- the one I actually landed. I had to go really slow and like put it over. I still have the board. I saved, oh, you like, saved it. Good. All my boards, yeah. and you could see like the board side marks are on the back truck. Like oh. it's almost like a truck slide. No oh, way. Wow. Huh. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Full How many commitment. tries? It was like fifteen. Seriously, mm-hmm. fifteen yeah. tries to do a board slide. Yeah. And like was that fucking with you? It was hard, yeah. Because in my head, I was like, f- I mean, first try, I'm probably going to bail. So I go really fast and mm-hmm. make sure I can jump to the other one. Yeah. And I was like, I'll land it second try. And then it was like really steep, like really fast slide. Had to cope with that. Mm-hmm. And then I had to like just really like try super hard to do the trick. And um, that was definitely kind of frustrating, mm-hmm. and especially being up there. And I kind of hurt myself while I was up there. Yeah. There was a sign that they had to put down and yeah. it, you slipped on it. Mm-hmm. It looked like you, you almost like buckled your, like your leg or yeah. something. I pulled my hamstring and like rolled my ankle a little. Jeez. But then the adrenaline was going. Yeah. Just, I was bet. Like, yeah. You got to do this. How many people were there? You got Burnett. You got a f- two, three filmers, four filmers. It was TJ Gaskill, Burnett, Mills, and me. Oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. And Burnett took the photo from below. He was even saying that he wanted the same water tower, Jeremy Ray type esque thing. I couldn't believe that it came out so good. Like with the shadow and everything, like that photo, Mike did such a great job. I couldn't believe it. Like I like had an idea. I was like, yeah, it's going to look gnarly on board side. And it's fucking, it's a big (laughs) rail, 16 stair rail. (laughs) The shadow is amazing. Yeah. And then I was like, it's going to look sick. And then, yeah, like the photo came out. Oh my so God. good. I couldn't believe it. Did you have any idea it was going to be a cover? Like, did he just tell you that's a cover? You kind of had mean, to know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like, look at that spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure Burnett too was, was like. Quarter page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes. Well, he showed me that uh, he was like, dude, I was looking at the Jeremy Ray cover and I was like, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, man. Dude. Well, you've had a bunch of covers, dude. We have the, the lip slide at the uh, what is it, the Azusa School? Is uh-huh. that a that's gnarly, too? By the yeah, way. how many Jesus stairs Christ. is that? 20. Uh, 25, I think, but it's tall, shit, huh? Yeah, it's pretty tall. Oof, I like a taller rail, though. I you like, like to pop and get on it, mm-hmm. huh? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Was why because there's not as much impact landing on the rail. Like when you get on it? I think I'm better at just going as fast as I can and fucking sending it. Yeah. Than just like being more precise. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Maybe that's why the yeah. water tower is so hard. Whatever works, man. Yeah. So the water tower is um, by far the gnarliest, scariest thing that you've done. Or no? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, bro. That's fucking insane, <laughs> dude. I mean, just looking at this cover behind you and then the fucking footage and oh my God. What did you do after you landed it? Like when you went home, did you just like party or something? Did what you, you guys went? go to like IHOP Celebrate? or something? Yeah. <laughs> um, We're with Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, what did we do? Went to um, Disneyland. Well, the drive back was took so long and then we like hit traffic and stuff too. It was... We, we had, like, a little case of beer in the car driving oh, yeah. back. Nice little party. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. my ankle was pretty swollen. Like, by the time we got back, it was, like, a baseball on my ankle. Damn. Oh, damn. And um, I just, like, got home. Um, I mean, saw my girlfriend, obviously. Like, sure. she was very happy that I was still You were alive. alive. Yeah. <laughs> I think I called my mom, told her. Um, and then... Uh, oh, so you were telling people before you even went? You were telling your mom. I like, told a few people. You said, "Mom, I'm going to this thing." <laughs> if I disappear, that's where I'll be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fifty foot oil drum. Yeah, and then um, Kyle Walker came over. Like we hung out. Hmm. Uh, I think that was like the very beginning of the year, and um, I'd st- I stopped smoking weed in the beginning of the year. Okay, but I was like, yeah. I don't care. Well, like, let's get this. <laughs> yeah. Smoked a little yeah. joint and just had a couple beers and chilled. Wow, nothing crazy. That's insane, yeah. bro. Jesus Christ. Do you ever, do you, 
skate like if you drink a beer and like skate something kind of big all the time really mm. you've been like pretty buzzed and done something you're does it give you like liquid courage yeah liquid courage i guess takes um, edge off maybe it could either help you or hurt you in some scenarios. <laughs> and then, Gotta find that fine line. Yeah. Yeah. It helps me. Yeah. <laughs> You're skating curves. With I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy. Still helps me. Yeah. But yeah, like a couple beers sometimes is fun. It depends on like like I said, it's all about like the environment that you're yeah, in, yeah. like who you're hanging out with. There were definitely some times filming the birdhouse video where I'd maybe drank a little too much and ended up with the trick, which was shocking. <laughs> okay. um, but then, like, yeah, sometimes, like, just one or two beers will definitely, like, help. Take the edge off. Mm -hmm. little, yeah, yeah, I can see that. No beers at the water tower. Hell no. That was, like, <laughs> complete focus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you up there even second thinking? Like maybe I mean I know you you brought all these people out to film and Burnett and were, any thoughts of like or was it like I'm doing this fucking thing no turning back no turning back yeah. there was definitely a point in trying it I was like oh fuck like what happens if I don't land this like oh uh, yeah what happens if we like am I gonna come back I was like fuck no I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah. fucking coming back here like fuck this and then um yeah that was. That was definitely like the scariest. Mm -hmm. When I hurt myself up there, I was like, that was the scariest part. Devastating, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't believe, like, having to walk down those stairs, being like, there's no way I was going to give up. Right. I think I get that way with a lot of tricks. Like, once I invest myself into it, I'm like, I'm not going to give up. Right, right. I could put a yep. mani pad down there, maybe. Man, <laughs> man, man, I'll down that thing. Put a manual pad on the oil drum? Yeah, <laughs> on the stairs. <laughs> yeah. 16 stair manual. Fucking. That no, scary. that's that's insane. One I, I'm not a big heights guy. You know what I mean? So if I'm up high or whatever, I don't know why. It's just kind of, I used to not be. Can we have a therapy session for me right now? <laughs> like, I used to not be scared of heights. And now I get this weird feeling. Like, if I'm up on a balcony on like a, you know, good you know like a high rise or whatever mm. like, like i want to close the door and lock it it's kind of like, like you i want to get the fuck out of there you kind of get like dizzy in a weird way i almost you know what feel mean? like the gravity the on your butthole i almost feel like <laughs> what? maybe after a couple beers slapping a curb rush <laughs> I, I almost get a feeling of like gravity is like pulling wants to pull me over it's hard for me to relate to that uh um, weird my girlfriend's scared of heights and that was one thing that was hard for me to cope with um mm. A bunch of her friends and um, maybe we went to. <laughs> to why like, he was like, oh, "I don't know if I could date you." Yeah, you like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scared of heights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we went to uh, where, Sedona, and we went. Uh, what do they call them? Vortexes, where they're supposed to be like places in the earth where the energy is like greater than other spots, oh. and um, supposed to like be enlightening and okay. whatnot. And we went to these vortexes, and a lot of them you have to hike up there, and they'll be like on the side of the cliffs and stuff. Wow. And uh, Anna was like freaking out at some of the spots, and mm -hmm. like I didn't get it. I was like, "What's wrong with you? Like, yeah. come on! Like, we gotta walk around yeah. this." And but like, it like really that was definitely like a learning curve in our relationship, where I was like, "Not all people." Well, because you the can't same, see it. Know? It's this inner thing, you know, mm. and it's not like I mean. Yeah, for me it's so I can't foreign explain it. I'm like, what? Like, there was this one point they call it um, Devil's Bridge or Devil's Ridge oh, or something. <laughs> and it's like uh, this like walk out where there's oh, a huge drop I've seen and that. you look out. Yeah, it's a really famous spot. Yeah. Oh, the big rock thing. No. It's like it like this peaks out and it's like it. Is it's there a like railing? A, it looks like a bridge almost. No railing. Oh, and, God. Um, no, you would not catch me out there. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, yeah. dude. But everyone like walks up, and they come around the back, and they walk out there, and they take a... F in the middle, it's like a thin strip, and then here oh, is like, like cliffs almost. coming in. That one? Maybe, yeah. Uh, I've seen people... I've seen it honestly it. looks like a bridge. Like, here's... Oh. Like, Man-made? No. I mean, it's because I've seen rocks. the one where the big rock juts out, and you've seen people like yeah. sitting on the edge of it. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah, it's like the potato mm -hmm. chip. It's like the potato. Yeah. yeah. No, this isn't it. That's not that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but whatever. People walk around the side, yeah. and then they go and they take their photo standing in the middle, oh, where Jesus. it looks like you're on like a thin layer with a huge drop in the middle. And, but to to walk off like you'd walk back. Yeah. But if you go the other way, there's only like 
a three foot, four foot gap that you could jump over, and then you're Don't back tell on the me, trail. Bro, did you jump over that fucking yeah, thing? Me, <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking. But it's like it's that big. It's like, dude. Yeah, like, but still, the drop still, is that, the drops hundreds of feet, right? Was right here, like if you had to jump over that placemat, like you wouldn't think about it twice. Yeah. Yeah, but if there's a two hundred foot yeah. fucking drop. I don't know. To me, like it's the same thing. Uh, but I jumped over that okay. instead of like walking back because there's a long line. Everyone's like being safe, and I was like, I'm not walking back. Everyone's like, jumping. Jump Everybody wants way. a selfie. People Everyone's are dying. Have photo, people are yeah. dying taking selfies of yeah. shit like people this. Fall off yeah. But yeah, my girlfriend was freaking out. I yeah, I bet. Like, Did she go out? Did she do it? No, she yeah. couldn't walk out right. there. No. Yeah, like I said, it's this inner... I, I can't... The best way I can describe it is it, I feel like gravity is trying to pull me over. Mm. Like that's the only way I can even describe it. Ask your girl if yeah, that's kind of the same feeling she has did or you, if it's just... Did you feel that way when we did the VR at YouTube? Yeah, we did this VR thing. We went to YouTube over here. They have a studio and they were showing us VR stuff. And they had this VR one where you go up in this elevator, like to a high rise building, and then they have a piece of wood, like about as thick as this, uh, uh, strip of boards. Strip yeah. of boards. Uh, boards yeah. And you, you could walk out on it. It's VR. I'm what? standing in a fucking room. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Raj jumped off the building. Yeah. <laughs> Raj committed VR suicide. Yeah, I walked on the thing yeah. and then and I jumped. jumped. That's it. I, couldn't, you... I couldn't even do it, bro. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is the hilarious. shit that's in my head. You see what I'm saying? There's something like that in, um, oh, it's by the Grove, where you could do like a, it's like an IMAX VR experience. You can do the man on the wire, the guy who walked. Oh, really? Oh, oh, that could be crazy. Between the two World Trade Center uh -huh. things. That would be Wait, cool. what happened when you did it, Raj? Did, right now. It literally you jumped and it, you just you you like you seriously feel like you're falling because like it's it's going yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I you, basically had to remind myself I am at YouTube space. <laughs> <laughs> I am Chris and this other guy is like in the room Libor. with me. It's like Libor, a dream yeah. or something. Yeah, like, that. like I was just basically like there was solid ground underneath me. Fuck it, I'm just gonna jump. <laughs> like I just had to remind myself I, that I was like not in a game. I was actually in. I was looking at like a video game. Yeah, you know? Clive, I couldn't even walk out on the plank. Yeah, this guy jumped off the building. Dang, it was trippy. <laughs> I was actually wanted to talk to you about that on the ride home, man. Are you okay, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you couldn't tell yourself like this is. You know what? It's just this. Dude, when I, you're, I was when you're trying immersed to. in that world. It is. You feel Have like you tried you're VR? Like, Never. Done it's it. a trip. It's crazy. It is a fucking trip, yeah. dude. You know that you're in it, but you can't see anything. Yeah. You can't. I can't see Roger next to me. I yeah. can't. All I can see is I'm in this world with a plank and I walk out. And at first there's some pigeons on the plank yeah. and you get closer to the and plank and, the, and they fly away. It's Whoa. a trip. If you ever get the chance, do some VR shit. It's trippy. It's awesome. It's trippy. Yeah. Wow. Does it look like, not like a video game, but like real, real? Kind it was of, pretty yeah. real. You feel like you're in this world. Yeah. Like the graphics were pretty... Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty on point. I feel like I could get really into it. Sometimes it's even cool. watching the movies, I'll get so into it. Yeah. And like, I get like secondhand embarrassment sometimes. And I'll have to be like, it's just a movie. It's just <laughs> <laughs> like, I can imagine VR. I'd be like really into it. Yeah. Really? yeah. Yes. Did you have a girl when you were doing the kissing thing and the... No, no, I did not. Okay. Do VR with it. that. Yeah. <laughs> sure Make out book or whatever. Sorry, that was random. No, Raj. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raj is baby next king of the road. Raj is <laughs> into some weird shit. Maybe he's done it. What does your What does your girlfriend think about your skating? Like the stuff you do? She likes it. Yeah. She's, uh, she's she thinks scared. It's cool. Um, no, because she knows. She's that. not seeing it though. She's just seeing it in videos, I, like we everybody else. Yeah, I don't think she's ever seen it in person. She mm -hmm. did come. I did. Um, one of those ETN things, oh, and yeah. I got beat up pretty bad. And I think then she was really like, "Oh, like, you're not just playing around with your friends every day." Like, right? She saw me like hit my head. Going and, to work. Yeah. yeah. Which was, ETN thing did you do? I did like a face melters where I was skating these hubbas and um. I miss which that which one. hubbas? I miss it. Oh, where are they? San Pedro. They're uh, eighteen stair hubbas. There's two of them. There's a handrail in the middle. And the hubbas are a little taller than the rail. Hmm. Ed Duff and I skated it together, and um, the ground is fucking terrible. And me, him, and uh, TJ Gaskell, we put down, like, grout. Like, you could lay the grout almost like cement in, like, rough asphalt, and it fills in all the creases and yep. stuff. Yeah. And we got, like, seven bags of grout and, like, fixed Smoothed the initial run-up and stuff, made it skatable. 
and um you know we skated it and i um i lacquered the hubba's and like grinded them down and i wanted to tail slide it and i think i lacquered it and waxed it a little too much and i was slipping back on the tail slide i bruised my heel really bad oh god and the deal was like he's got his lacquer lacquer kit right there Uh, the deal was like you only get half the excuse me Mm -hmm. you only get half the money for trying the other half for rolling away and i was like fuck dude like i kind of like sabotaged myself on this tail slide and then i was like well i'll just crook the other one and in my head, I was like, I'll crook it first try. Yeah. First try, like, went to stick it, pre mowed off of it, hit my head. Oh. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then I ended up getting the crook. But Is that the one, the, the white one? The one that you posted recently on Instagram? Yeah. That one looked insane. Yeah. Hmm. For sure. So that's sure. when she saw she that saw this, this yeah. isn't child's play. Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is big boy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What about the uh, crooks on Staples Center hubba? I never, how, how many tries that take you? You said you stuck on the first one and then... And then a few years later did it. Oh, a few uh, years later? Yeah. How many tries when you went back? Uh, I think it was like 10 tries. Oh, It was hard to roll away from that. Like, lots it's a of big impact. fucking hubba. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking huge. I was riding pretty small boards at the time, too. I think I was riding small like trucks, a, yeah. 8.1, 8.2. Oh, what do you ride now? 8.5. 8. eight. Oh, you got damn. Your, your eight and a half. It's a big board. Mm-hmm. Uh, what size wheels? 56. Independent trucks? Yeah, of course. Bronson bearings? Of course. Okay. Just making sure. Rick, making, Rick, sure you're, making sure you're riding all the Rick sponsors. Rick yeah, Rick does, yeah. I went on the most okay. insane Bronson trip recently. Oh, yeah, seriously? I heard that they sent 40, uh, Rhino sent 40 edited photos from that trip. Wow. Oh, wasn't that after Tampa or something? It was. Because right I saw you Tampa, out there. Yeah. 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 Who's crazy. your favorite skater? Favorite skater yeah. of all time? All time. Or favorite skater skateboarding right now? How about all time Both. and then now? Both, yeah. Favorite skater of all time would have to be Heath Kirchhardt. I know it's a good, little good. No, cliche. it's perfect. It makes, it makes sense. sense. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. it's fucking amazing. He's sick. And then favorite skater right now is either Winkowski or uh, Milton Martinez. Dude, Milton hey. Martinez, dude. He gets buck. Mm-hmm. You you guys skate together? We skate a few times. It's fun. Really yeah, f- gnarly nice spots. Dude. <laughs> No, we've never really gone to anything gnarly. It's mostly just been like chilling, huh. hanging out. But even that, I'm like, yeah, you're the fucking he's shit. Cool, yeah, yeah. He's good, good dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Never met him. Never met him. He's a cool dude. I met him before. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two covers, two Thrasher covers. Any other covers? That's all. That's it? Hey. I've done you some stuff. Uh, all right. Did some stuff with the skateboard. Two Thrasher mag. covers is an accomplishment. <laughs> One Thrasher cover is an accomplishment. Hell yeah. Let alone yeah. two. Yeah, I'm sorry. You said what you did. Uh, I've done some stuff with the skateboard mag. Okay. Um, thanks to Bart Jones. He set all that up. Like, Bart's great, dude. Oh, yeah. dude. Great, dude. He's Hell a yeah. Wild He's wild. <laughs> He's so He's funny, wild. bro. I know Bart pretty well. Definitely been on some Bart Jones we sessions. We need Bart on the show. Hell oh, yeah. That'd be amazing. He's one of those dudes, you just ask him any question just to hear his response. Yeah. Anything he's gonna say back, it's just gonna be. You don't know where you're gonna yeah. go. With <laughs> yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah. The first time I met him, yeah, it was. Um, I was like 20 years old and I was going, it was the very first trip for that We Are Blood film. Okay. And Ty didn't even have sponsorship yet. It was kind of like on his own dime and he had us come out to Barcelona. And on my connecting flight, I forget where it was, I think it was already in Europe at that point. And I'm like walking onto the flight and I saw Bart and I was like, hey, like, what's up, man? I didn't know who he was. I was like, are you coming like on this trip? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And like he was being normal Bart and I didn't really know. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I kept he he'll always remind me about this. I kept like being like, Are you all right, man? Like, are you okay? Like, is everything cool? And he was like, Yeah, I'm fine. Like, this is my normal me. Like, you know, he's being like <laughs> Why were you spazzing asking? Because oh, he's just... spazzing out, he's okay. being O C D, he can't stop talking, he's like being crazy. It's and for half coke. of that trip, yeah. He's like yeah. sweating all the time. I thought that yeah. it was like he was putting it on as a show. Sure. And then by the end of that trip I was like, Oh, like this is how you live every day. That's Holy yeah. Shit, that's him. Yeah, he's amazing. Funny ass dude. He fucking is Bart. Hilarious. Um, bro, this has been amazing, man. I love you, bro. We could sit here for fucking <laughs> hours and sit here and talk, man. Yeah. You're a great dude, man. Great stories, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Gnarly together. Gnarly skater. I don't know what we'd go skate, dude. <laughs> that would be great. Cherry Park. Yeah, manual pad. I really appreciate just 
skating a yeah. lot now, okay. especially after like filming video parts like back to back and kind of always like trying to get a trick or think about the next trick. It's really helped me appreciate. Do you like, feel like you need to outdo yourself? I don't feel like I have to. I feel like I want to. Yeah. I feel like I I haven't yet filmed a part where I'm like that's what I got. Yeah. Every single part I've ended, I've been like, dude, I can do a little bit better than that. I could do <laughs> like I've never ended a part being like I did all the tricks I wanted to do. Like okay. there's always like more stuff. I feel like I'm still trying to get there like maybe the next one I'll be like what are you working That's on now? I don't know. I'm just skating. No, just no, filming. no plans. No, uh, no big videos no coming up. Plans, no. B- another Burt House, maybe. Yeah. No, I don't, Tony, I don't know. Tony's I'd like to do t- something different. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Whatever. I mean, I'm. I was like, I got about a minute of footage, and whatever it turns oh, yeah. into, it'll turn into. Maybe a go. maybe a Vans part. Wink, wink. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, not yeah, much. I don't know. It's, it's better to have footage than to not. You know, hundred percent, man. Yeah. Just keep filming, doing your thing, and this, I mean, obviously, it's, it's skating. Something's gonna come up. Yeah, you yeah, know, well, whether it be yeah. Birdhouse or I mean, anything. Bronson yeah. could do something. Indy, you know. Yeah, well, Bronson's Indy. about to have a fucking insane trip article. Oh, coming out there you go. Yeah. See, I watched like Winkowski do some of the fucking sickest shit ever. <laughs> On a fucking like '80s board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Wait, is the footage out of that already? No. So it'll come out when the article I th- does. I'm I assuming. think the article is in the next Thrasher. Oh, dope. And um, yeah, there'll be some photos yeah. and some footage and wow, oh. some hijinks possibly. Cool, That's man. Amazing, bro. Listen, can we give you some Nine Club stuff to take home? Would you do you yeah, m- a mug, maybe, yeah. shirt, sweater, hoodie? Stickers. I love free swag. Okay, cool. I'll take free swag. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, can you yeah, please grab what size? Uh, what size are you? Uh, medium. Medium. Me, Clive. Are you serious? Yeah. You're medium. Keep it tight, medium. bro. Okay. Just making tight? sure, bro. It's medium. <laughs> is that a medium? It's medium. Am I wearing the wrong size, Raj? I, I'm, a, I'm a large, but I'm skinny as fuck. You're just trying to hide your skinny body. That's true. You got more thug That's edge true. than I do. I'm a little thug. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. You also um, you uh, you 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 wrote a book. I did. Yes, mm-hmm. it's not out yet though. No. It's uh, it's it's in the pr- it's. You said it's done, but it's not done. The content is there. Um, right. The final edit is not finished. Okay. Do you have a title for it? It's called uh, "Feed Me Out of Me." Feed me out of me. Mm-hmm. And then what is the like? What's the book about? I, it's amazing that you even wrote something. You know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I guess, saying it like that, Raj. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> writing it, a yeah, book I is, is, yeah, uh, I, think I, know, I never feat. like went out looking to do it. I yeah. never like thought that it would happen. It was just something that ended up coming together. Mm-hmm. And I guess the premise would be like taking in a hard experience you're going through and like discovering who you are and making the most out of your experiences okay. and like using whatever's inside yourself to like fuel your ambitions yes um i've been working on it for like four years now it's great and just trying to piece it together and yeah. make, get it to where i'm happy with it each time i'd finish like a edit and i'd read through it and like change it and come up with another draft i think i have like i'm on my like 10th draft now oh, wow. each time i'd end it i'd be like oh like yes like i have something that i'm happy with like this is really it and then i'd like start reading through it and i'd be like oh no like i've got to change this i gotta change this i gotta change this and so like it's it's getting there there you go long process man it is i mean congratulations for even writing something and putting something down on paper when i look at paper and I, i try to write something blank I can't put anything down on paper. Yeah. Even in my laptop, I, I, I have ideas in my head and I can't, I can't put them physically down the way that I want them. You That's saying? why you have to do draft after draft after draft. Yeah. And it's like, I never like asked myself to write something, you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of like a release in the time okay. with the things I was dealing with and just was like jotting down notes or writing like little poems and like things that I was feeling. Mm hmm. And it just came together. And do you keep a journal? I do. Not as much anymore, but in like this year that it was like 2015, okay. the year after my father passed away. Mm. And so that I was really like focused and really like taking it in or like taking everything that I was feeling and putting it on paper. Right. And um, 
yeah, it just turned into this novel that I've now written. It's amazing, dude. And how do you go about publishing something like that? Do you even know? I mean, I know you could self-publish. There's a lot of different outlets out there that you could do it, like, um, you know, uh, digitally and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But how do you, I mean, have you even like looked into any options? I don't think that I would self-publish it. No. Um, I got like a little insight from a Stephen King book on writing where Mm. he talks about publishing work and um a lot of it was about like finding a literary agent and maybe that's something that i'll try to pursue next yeah. just like come up with like a an email that i'll send to some agents and see what they think and i mean whatever happens happens yeah. it's like i have no real expectations but uh yeah self-publishing is not something i'll do because it's it's really revealing and okay I just think about like what my mom is going to be like. Oh God! Like this Has is what? It? No, hell no. Because it's yeah. you. You the wrote only it. way she'll read it is she buys it buys from a book, right? Because yeah. you wrote it basically for yourself, though. Exactly. You know, yeah. It was this, yeah. Have you given it to anyone to read? Yeah, a few people have read it. Very talented, Gosh. Clive, bro. Very talented yeah. dude. Listen, Clive. Here's some stickers and a mug for you. You can put the stickers on your board if you want. <laughs> we get photo incentive. Okay. okay. All right. Twenty bucks. Cover with Thrasher. <laughs> Cover with Thrasher. Okay. Twenty bucks. I hope I could get it there. You know what I'm saying? Here's a medium crew neck hoodie. I mean, I'm sorry, a me- medium crew neck hoodie. <laughs> There's a medium crew neck nine club embroidered for you. Cool. If you don't like blue, we have a whole warehouse back here. You can go we'll shopping. Exchange it. We'll exchange yeah. it for you. Oh. Uh, Look, Kelly brought the... Uh, I thought it was fitting to give him a manual shirt. There you go. <laughs> Switch flip manual t-shirt. Nine Playing club. back there. That's the Lance Mountain. He drew that. Uh, the okay. little flip book. Yep. But that's it, bro. Cool. That's it. I'm running with it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Dude, Clive, you're the man. Yeah. Thank you so awesome. much. Hey, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Love your yeah, shit. Clive. Yeah. Thanks, keep guys. doing it, bro. This is great. It wasn't... Um, as scary as I thought it would be. Oh, <laughs> what was scarier, jumping over a plane, El Toro, or doing this? Coming here. <laughs> I almost told Kelly no. I needed like a day to think about it. <laughs>